This is Unit 2, Lesson 6, Finding Values from Percentages Under Normal Models. The lesson is, will Marty make it back to the future, part two. We are going to be finding this with the z-score model, but also there's a bonus in this one, and I will be also showing you how to use the calculator competency, which is inverse normal. Okay, please open your lesson, will Marty make it back to the future, part two. Okay, so we started with the kind of the review of what we did before, what we did in last lesson, and it's still we're doing the same normal model with a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 7.7. .7. So here's my model. We want to label it 87.7. .7. Here's my mean. And this particular question asks, what's the percent that will be run that's less than 70 miles per hour? So we have 70 here. And we're going to do observed minus mean divided by standard deviation, and I get negative 1.3. I go ahead and look at my normal model. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, my normal model is right here. So I'm looking up for negative 1.3. Okay, and I'm going to be looking for on the negative side, 1.3. So let's find 1.3 is here. And since it's 1.30, remember the yellow is where my z-scores are and the green is the area under the curve. So I have negative 1.30. And so my area is going to be for a z-score when that equals negative 1.3. I'm looking for the probability that the z-score equals that, or really it's less than or equal to it, which we can also just call less than since the z-score of it actually equaling it, I'm making a mess of this, it actually equaling it is going to be zero. So it's actually less than because remember, it's the area shaded to the left of the z-score. So that's equal to 0 0.0968, which is move the decimal over two times 9.68%. So we go back to our lesson. And we got 9.68%. Now, I'm going to also review. Remember, if you did it in the calculator, we're going to go to normal CDF. And remember, how do we do that? For our normal CDF, I'm going to have my lower bound. Remember, normal CDF gives me four things that I need, which is normal CDF, which is my lower bound, my upper bound, my mean, and my standard deviation. So the lower bound, remember, is the most left area of the curve that I've shaded. And you can see it goes all the way to the left, so it's anything that's off the curve. So what I do if it goes off the curve and it's on the left side, I just go negative infinity. And then upper bound is the most right that it gets shaded, right here, and that gets me 70. The mean is 80, and this little funny symbol means standard deviation, and that's 7.7. .7. So let's put it into our, our calculator, where for normal CDF, the way you get that is make sure you open up a new document and go to a calculator page. You can't use it on the scratch pad. So you're gonna go new document calculator page, and you've got statistics, distribution, normal CDF, the lower bounds, negative infinity, or ours, we put negative 999. The upper bound, now I'm forgetting what we put is 70, sorry. And our mean was 80 and our standard deviation is 7.7. .7. Okay, and I got 0 0.097. So you can see that it's not exactly the same, but it's really close. And it's going to be a little different because the calculator can be much more precise than the chart. You can use either one that you're comfortable with. I prefer the calculator because it's a lot quicker and a little bit more precise. Okay, so let's look at our lesson, what score we're going to look at today. Today, we're going to kind of do the opposite. We, I reviewed for you of, hey, I have, a, I have values and I need a percentage, and now I'm going to give you a percentage and we're going to look for values. So we're gonna actually just literally go backwards. First of all, I'm gonna show you how to do it in the chart, and then I'm gonna transform over to the calculator. So it says Marty wants uh, his to be at least 85%. So you can see this is shaded 85%. And I wanna know what that value is. Okay, so we're gonna have to look up the chart. And the reason being is because I need to find what my z-score is because this is my formula I have, right? Now I'm cheating and I'm giving you what the z-score formula is gonna be, but I'm gonna show you how to get that in just a second. But I have my value, which I don't know, my mean, which is 80, 
and my standard deviation which is 7.7 and that's going to equal my z-score so since I can find my z-score from the chart let's go ahead and do that so let me go ahead and do that even though you know it because I showed it to you I'm still going to show you how to do it because I'm looking for the 85th percentile so remember what I told you is that the green part are my percentiles and the yellow part are my z-scores. And I'm looking for 85th percent. But 85th percent, remember this here, that with my curve, the, the, this is zero and these are all negative values and these are positive values. Well, this is 50%. And so everything 50% or less. So I know I'm gonna have to go to my positive values to try to find 85%. 85% is not going to be perfectly on here, but I'm trying to find it as close as possible. So I'm going to go with this value right here. 85.08 is pretty close to 85%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line straight up and a line straight over, and I'm going to get 1.0, and then my hundredths is 4. 1.04. So that I knew, you know, spoiler alert, I already knew it because I showed it to you. But this literally means the probability that the z-score is less than 1.04 is equal to that 85%. Okay, let's look what we do with it. Now what, that we have the z-score of 1.04, we're going to just solve the equation. So I'm going to solve the equation here. Oh, sorry, wrong button. So I'm going to solve the equation here because now I have 1.04 equals x minus 80 times 7.7. .7. So let's go ahead and do the algebra on this. And I'm going to multiply both sides by 7.7. .7. And then I'm going to, once I do that, I'm going to add 80 to both sides and I'm going to get, so I'm going to 80 to both sides after that and I'm going to get 88 miles per hour all right let's look at number three and staying with the z-score I, I promised you I will go to the chart or excuse me the calculator for you but I'm going to stick with the chart for right now after I do this problem so now this is saying that has a mean speed of 74 miles per hour. So this has changed the mean speed up a little bit. That's 74 and the standard deviation, it doesn't know. It wants me to get the standard deviation. Okay, for this one, I'm gonna tell you, I cannot use a calculator. In order for me to use a calculator, I have to know the mean and the standard deviation. So I'm gonna have to use the chart for this one as it is. So I have a mean here of 74. I don't know my standard deviation. And so this is essentially all I have. I have z-score, which I don't know what it is yet, and I wanna find the z-score for 80%. I do know that equals this value of 88 minus the mean of 74 over the standard deviation, and I don't know the standard deviation at this point. So I'm gonna look up the z-score for 80%, so let's go back to our chart and look up 80%. Well, the last one we looked up was, was the last one we looked up was 85%, so it's going to be pretty close to the one we looked up. So here, we looked at 85% last time. Let's look at 80% this time. So 80% is going to be, this is pretty close, 80.23 or 79.95. Uh, this one's a little closer, 79.95, because it's only 0 0.005, and 0.023 is a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna go with this value, because it's pretty close. So I get 0.8 and then four again. So I got 0.84 is the one I'm going to use. And you look, it's, you're getting a value as close to it as possible. You're not going to, it's not going to be perfect. You're just going to try to get one that's close to it. So you can see that's what I used here as well, 0.84. So when I use 0.84, so the z-score I'm gonna go ahead and plug in is 0.84. So right here, then I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 88 minus seven, uh, 74 and get 14. And then in order to do the next step, you can actually multiply both sides by X and divide both sides by 0.84, which essentially you're switching these, 14 divided by 0.84, and then you're going to get X equals 16.7. So the standard deviation is equal to about 16.7 miles per hour. You do have to use a chart on this one. You can't use a calculator on this one. So you need to make sure you know how to use the chart, even though if you like the calculator better. 
Okay, let me show you how to use the calculator on number two. So we are going to use a calculator function called inverse norm. You're going to get to it the same way that you did normal CDF, menu, stats, distribution, and this time instead of normal CDF, it's called inverse norm. Inverse norm, you're gonna see the word area and you're gonna put the percentage shaded, make sure it's the shaded from the left. It always starts from the left. Then you're just gonna put the mean and the standard deviation in and that's it. So you don't have to look up anything on the chart. So you're gonna to go to menu, stats, distributions, inverse norm, which is right here, the third one down, and see there's area. So I'm just gonna put 0.85, my mean was 80, and my standard deviation was 7.7. .7. And I got 87.98, and let's look back what we got, and we ended up getting 88, so it's really close. Okay, so let's go ahead and the learning targets. And again, I said on this one, you can't use your, you can't use it. You can find your normal, you can find what your Z-score is for this, but you can't find anything else. You can find your Z-score on here and I'll show you how to do that if you wanna use it with not using the chart, but you do have to use the Z-score value. So you found 80% here, the Z-score. Well, always on every single normal model, the mean, and standard deviation are zero and one on your z-score always because you've standardized it so if you want to find your z-score on there you can you can go to menu stats distributions normal inverse norm and for 80 percent, i'm looking for my z-score for 80 percent leave zero and one intact and you're going to get 0.84 and notice that's exactly what i got here for my z-score i got 0.84 so you, that's as much as you can use the calculator, but you do have to go ahead and do this formula after that because I'm looking for a standard deviation. Okay, so for the learning targets, finding the given area, you have to find the z-score is the first step, is the find the z-score, or excuse me, yes, put it in the chart for the area right there, and you're gonna find the z-score for there, and then you'll find your value whichever one you're missing. Mean or standard deviation, same thing. If you're using, uh, oh, let me show you. If you're using inverse norm, if you're using inverse norm, you put the area and the mean and the standard deviation of whatever they are in the problem. And remember the areas from the left, just like this. For the mean and standard deviation, you can use inverse norm but you're only finding to the z-score. The area, whatever it is, again, the same area. The mean, though, is going to be zero, and the standard deviation is going to be one, and that finds you just a z-score. So that's the first step, or you do this first step by using the z-score table and using whatever the area is to find out what the z-score is. And the second step is if you're missing whatever you're missing to go ahead and solve for those algebraically. Okay, let's look at the practice problems that it has you doing. So for this one, it tells you 20th percent. So that means that's 20%. If you were to use a calculator, you would put inverse norm, area, 0.2, mean. It tells you the mean is 151.6 up here, and the standard deviation is 25. And immediately with this calculator competency, it would get you 130.6. If you did it on the chart, you would take 20% and you would look up. Let's go ahead and just do this. So we're gonna go ahead and look up 20%. So let's go here. And we're gonna find the z-score for 20%. So I'm going to find 20%. So as best as possible, I'm gonna look up for 0.2. So I see I have 0 0.209, 0 0.2, so I'm getting close to 0.2 as possible. That one's pretty close right there. It's pretty close to 20%, so that's gonna be negative 0.84. Negative 0.84. Okay, and I'm gonna go back here. You can see negative 0.84 is indeed what we got for the z-score and then they just do algebra by multiplying both sides by 25 and then adding 151.6 to get my answer.
or you use the calculator and these are the commands you use and that gives you the same answer. This one asks you to find standard deviation. So to find standard deviation, it says that it's going to be eight, this is 8.9%. So this is the top 8.9% it looks like. So I am looking for about 0 0.0 when I look for it in the chart, 8.9. That's what I'm looking for in the chart. Um, or I'm going to go ahead and go to my calculator and go to inverse norm area point. Now be careful because I want this part. If I put 0 0.089, it's going to get me this part down here, 8.9%. So 100 minus 8.9% is going to get me 91.1%. So I'm gonna put in 0.911. My mean is zero, my standard deviation of one, and this is going to get me a z-score of 1.35. I'll show you, let's go ahead and do so. So 0.911 is what you want. Menu, stats, distribution, inverse norm, area of 0.911. And there we do indeed get 1.35. So same thing or you can go to your chart and on your chart, you can look at 0.135 or, or sorry, 0.911, which on 0.911 is, I'm looking for about 91%, which is very close right here, which I get 1.35 as well. You can see I lined it up to the bottom of the chart and I get the same thing, which is 1.3 and then five. I bring it up here, you can see at the very bottom right of the screen is about 91%, and so that's 1.35. Great. So I believe that brings us to a close, and if there's anything else that you need help on, please let me know. Thank you very much.